Hello everyone and welcome back. Long time no see. You may remember me talking about the so-called micro ticks in past videos. Fear not though, I haven't forgotten about it. What I want to show you today is something I believe hasn't been done before. It is a new type of technology that utilizes these micro ticks in a very nifty way. This thing in front of me is an infinitely expandable button panel. And the thing on the other side of me is an infinitely expandable red coder. So here's the cool part. These two gigantic components are only connected to each other with one single wire. And this is not just any wire, it is a sort of instant wire that can handle any pulse length down to the micro tick. Anyhow, let's demonstrate. So at the moment it's on number 10, so let's press number 5. And get to number 5. So let's do 15. We have 15, let's do a bit higher, let's do a 35. And we have a 35, so let's do 50 for a good measure. We have number 50. So before I show you the designs in more detail, I want to briefly go through uh, microtics. Um, so here on the right is a way to generate microtics, and here to the left is just a band of pistons that will show you how many microtics the pulse will be. Um, so this thing wor works by cutting the dust and having this piston here directly powered and all of the other ones uh, bud powered. Meaning when I turn this lever off all these lines will turn off instantly and this will retract instantly and all of these will not really be instant. They will actually be delayed one by one or it's, a, it's, a, it's an update cascade. So this one will update this which will update this and so on all the way down the line. So what we have here is two micro ticks of delay because this is updating this and this is updating this. So a two micro tick pulse will actually only power one piston if you have it like this. And um, if you have one micro tick it will actually not power at all but you can still take an output from this signal. Uh, that might be useful, for example, if you have it over a door and you don't want this piston to fire, for example. Right, so, and yes, if you continue to move this redstone block, you will see that more pistons will get triggered. And, um, yeah. And to quickly go through how this receiver end works, is basically it will just... Um, stay on for a certain amount of time and the update cascade that is occurring will only reach a certain uh, distance before the pulse is actually turning off meaning uh, it will just power as many pistons it can in the time this pulse is on and uh, I made a quick example over here that could maybe illustrate it a bit better so if you have a pulse coming in here uh, these will be unpowered at the same time as this pulse comes and you will just yeah if you have a 4 tick pulse you will get a 4 tick uh, or 4 powered pistons rather which is similar to this so far nothing I've shown you is kinda new or groundbreaking but what is really new is the combination of these micro tick pulses with these type of repeaters. Uh, this is the repeater I came up with um, kind of recently. I had made a really old version with the Gunmaster some years ago and that is actually the thing that inspired me to make this thing or uh, it inspired me of this idea basically and it turned out it was possible to actually send micro ticks within these repeaters. Uh, so this repeater here is uh, something I came up with to, together with uh, the Gunmaster. He helped with this 
uh, resetting parts. Uh, so it basically works. So if you have a zero tick incoming here, or any pulse actually, um, it will instantly remove this block from this, uh, yeah, this cut here. So it will instantly pass through redstone um, or power. And then when this turns off, here's the interesting part. When this turns off, which can be any delay, uh, for example, 10 micro ticks, uh, this will retract. At the moment it, it is budded, so it will stay extended. But when this redstone block is gone from here, this can retract, and it will only retract when this turns off. So that is the falling edge of the micro tick pulse. So when this turns off, this retracts, turning off the power from this line. Meaning you will have the exact amount of micro ticks that you sent. So you've sent 10 micro ticks, you will get out 10 micro ticks. And if you're wondering why this line is already on, it's just the lag optimization. A certain amount of items in here to keep the redstone dust already powered so it barely reaches. Because as we all know, redstone is a bad lag causer. So yeah, just keep this thing going around and you will have your 10 micro ticks in the output. Before showing you these button panels and these receivers or red coders in more detail, I want to show you something else. This is a more interesting way of transmitting signals, according to me. Uh, you can actually use rail buds as a way of transporting these micro ticks. So here I have receiver and a transmitter. So if I just send one here, for example, you will get a one and a five and an eight. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, so it works by having two parallel, infinitely expandable bud lines. This is like a common known design. So if you update one and directly power another, you can actually get the difference between these micro tick pulses. Uh, and then you have a repeater station like this that takes the rising edge or the first update, uncutting this uh, dust. And then you have the falling edge, which is the directly powered one will remove the source, so this will catch the falling edge, meaning you can actually simply get the correct micro tick amounts as an output in dust form again. Meaning you can power another set of rails, going through bends and corners, and then having another one of these stations, then you get the micro ticks out of this thing again, into this receiver. So yeah. It's a pretty simple idea, but I think it's pretty cool and I think it might be quite lag efficient because rails are uh, probably way less laggy than redstone dust. Not too sure about observers though, haven't really checked, but it's an interesting alternative to redstone dust because we don't really like redstone dust. Alright, let's go through these button panels. So let's start with the simple version. This is version number two. Uh, me and the Gunmaster made it. Uh, we had some help with sp from Spacewalker. He came up with a nice concept. Uh, so here it is. It's basically a row of budded pistons and a rail, or actually a budded rail. So it, the way it works is you press a button, you will power directly this piston, for example. Uh, and this will cause the cascade of updates to travel down this line. Uh, at the end of this line we have a redstone block that gets updated, which is also budded. And this will turn off this power. At the same time we have rails, and these rails are also budded uh, with this simple rail bud. So basically if you power it, the power will reach this Budded, this budded rail and this will realize oh it should be turned on so this will turn on turning more on 
which basically means you can press all the way over here and this entire rail will instantly turn on. And actually, this rail will turn on. There is no cascading going on in a rail. It will bypass this entire um, uh, piston chain over here. So this will turn on before any pistons and it will instantly update this piston which will remove the power source and then 10 micro ticks later for example uh, this one will remove its power so you will get this 10 micro tick as an output the first bottom panel is a bit different it doesn't use any redstone dust and the input looks kind of funky if you ask me it's basically repeaters updating these pistons down here so you update the first piston, then two redstone ticks later, the next piston. Um, so this is also working by simply cascading these updates down the line, uh, powering this dust here, powering this monostable with sand, and then you have two redstone ticks later, this update cascade will update this budded piston from this repeater, uh, generating the micro tick uh, depending on which you pressed so yeah s simple as that basically and now for the red coders so we have four different versions over here some are a bit bigger a bit laggier some a bit faster some are not as nice with uh, spaces in between and some are just interesting I could say so let's start with, yeah, let's do this one because it's simple. <clears throat> the general idea with this uh, red coder or receiver is it's basically using uh, droppers. Uh, you can actually bud droppers and they can almost behave as pistons, except they cannot update each other. So you need pistons to update the droppers uh, to uh, basically send an item instantly as far as you have micro ticks down this line and then we just basically turn this comparator off for a short time uh, making the item suck get sucked down so you can get an output it turned out to be pretty annoying to get an output from the uh, droppers because the next time you would press the button you would get a conflicting item and it was just annoying so we decided to do it like this uh, and of course this is a design by me and the gunmaster um, so yeah just have uh, pistons updating these droppers powering the first one over here cascading down this line and um, as you can see we had to split up the input then have this entire row be um, activated at the exact same micro tick otherwise it would not really work then you would have uh, a setup like this if you just have the repeaters in the, the inside the design it will require a space um, so this is simply a more laggy version but more symmetrical if you would need this uh, yeah it's a kind of simple uh, let's go through this one this is basically yeah the same except it got the repeaters inside it and mm, yeah I guess there's nothing more else to say about this here's a side view the pistons updating and in these uh, uh, slices here you have upward facing pistons to keep the size uh, okay, let's go through the next one Here's the next one. This is the latest one we made uh, it got But a piston line over here um, Right in order to keep this one infinitely expandable without a whole lot of redstone like this one we actually use uh, again a a, um, a rail bud which will instantly turn on or off uh, when you update it all the way down <clears throat> so the idea with this one is at the moment 
these droppers are budded and these pistons so if you cause an update to this piston on the rising edge of the micro tick so the micro tick is coming from here let's say it's a 10 micro tick this one will turn on instantly updating this so you, you get the cascade going on bam 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 down the line updating each dropper and the dropper will actually instantly uh, pass the item along when they get updated uh, so it will do that at the same time as the falling edge of the pulse will come here as well uh, so when this dust turns off it will instantly turn off this entire rail causing all of these budded pistons to remove the bud source of these pistons and of these um, uh, droppers so that means the item will only pass along as long as they are budded these retract the item will simply stop in its track and then get sucked down and you get an output so that's that design um, then you have some uh, yeah small setup to power and unpower the droppers and stuff and you need to have from time to time a repeater to bud these pistons again and yeah that's that design so let's go through this one down here this is working in a similar manner uh, see here you on the rising edge update this piston budded piston line we have two budded pistons battling each other over here uh, this one will uh, instantly make these start retracting cascading down there and these droppers uh, I mean observers will power these droppers in a orderly fashion making the item shoot down this line over here uh, and on the falling edge we again have a rail and this will catch the falling edge and, and this all turns off all of these will instantly turn uh, or, or retract retracting the observers before the cascade so it will just go or travel down as far as the, the pulse length was so yeah that's that before I leave you today I want to show you some other stuff I came up with while researching this thing um, so let's start with this side I guess here's basically just the repeater I used over here another version of this repeater uh, yeah if you download the if you download the world you can just see for yourself what these do and we have some signs over here explaining some simple stuff have a vertical version I can say I haven't really tried this in a setup like this but it should work I think and same goes for this here's just a um, um, yeah an extended version if you really don't like redstone dust I guess and uh, here's the thing I showed earlier and here is another interesting thing let's say you really don't want to use redstone dust or as little as possible and you don't want to use these rail buds what do you do well you can actually do this entire thing with rails so this type of repeater here is a bit more advanced but it can actually work by having rails although you need two redstone dust per repeater sadly I couldn't really get it to work uh, with no repeaters uh, no redstone dust rather so yeah uh, let's try to explain it so on the rising edge when this turns on uh, this piston here which is budded will extend and instantly removing the cut from this redstone so that will keep the rising edge and uh, as you can see it's also this piston is also budded but this will not catch the rising edge because this piston is budding this piston so when this turns on this will not retract but when it turns off this redstone block here will be gone so this will catch the falling edge of this rail 
meaning this will retract the power source from here, giving out the correct microtick pulse here. And then we just have some uh, observer here to, or actually a yeah, yeah, piston pushes this back into a butter state, and this observer will basically cause this to re-extend again, so it keeps staying extended. Uh, over here is just an extended version of this. Um, same concept, just longer if you really don't uh, like redstone dust, you can have it a bit longer. Um, use some terracotta to make it not, as, not so close to the ground, because that would be annoying if it got stuck on the ground. Uh, you could also swap these redstone blocks out with a, sol a solid block, have a uh, yeah, any type of uh, container that can output a comparator signal, so you can have it just as strong as you want it, so it reaches like here, so you can have it less laggy. But then you would need to bend this dust with a button like this. So yeah, you can basically send pulses over this thing, like these big things over here but with only rails. Like I said, I haven't really done much research in lag, so I don't know if this is more or less laggy than this, but I will leave that up to you if you are interested even to build this thing. Anyways, um, there are signs on pretty much most of the things. Um, there are signs over here, who designed it, version, delay, uh, how much redstone dust per slice and I will of course leave a download link in the description of this world so you can try it out for yourself and yeah thanks for watching and see you next time